Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% Achievement Trophy Guide, and this time we are getting it all in the fun yet bizarre Karma Dot Incarnation 1. Now this was developed by Other Kind Games and Aura Lab, published by Chili Dog Interactive, and is available for £9.99. Now, first off I should say, you probably notice a lack of guides for this game, because there's no cheat code this time. It is all just an all-out easy point-and-click adventure. So we play as Pip, who is a, um, uh, kind of looks like a mauled frog with no legs or something. But it's basically a case of our little honey pie gets kidnapped by evil, we go on an adventure to save honey pie, etc, etc. But one thing I should note is, this is a hand-drawn, frame-by-frame animation style, and it does look as awesome as it is bizarre. Now, achievements-wise, they're all very easy, a few missable ones, a few that we have to wait a couple of minutes for idling, etc. Nothing too difficult. In fact, the hardest thing about the game is actually just getting used to the controls. I will try to guide you with what to press, etc. as we go on, but you will get there, because we're all damn fantastic. Am I right? Hells yeah, bruh. So, <laughs> you should be looking at roughly around one to one and a half hours to get this done. So, with that being said then, let us begin. So, it is literally, there's no sort of main menu. You just press the A button a couple of times and get yourself in there. You can double tap the A button now to get past this first cutscene. Uh, but, through the majority of the game, there are a lot of cutscenes that you cannot skip. Also, another thing that I should mention is... There is no pause option. Uh, when you press the start button, it just puts you back to the main menu, which can be annoying because it does... Um, if you have done a little something, it actually puts you back to the beginning of uh, wherever you were. Um, but it does come in handy if you do make a little mistake or something. You can just press the start button and it puts you back uh, just a little bit. Uh, so something just to be aware of there. So press the A button a couple of times to interact with everything. What you're going to do is move um, little pip, uh, little frogless frog legs with the D-pad. <coughs> Excuse me, left and right. And then the right stick is what you use to move to um, absolutely everything. So obviously, you've just seen we're going to speak to the dragon here. And we're going to get this unskippable cutscene. This is, yeah, this genuinely took a little bit of time for me to get used to, wondering what the actual shit and snacking was going on. So we're going to talk to him now. So again, it's always the right stick that you need to use to move the cursor about. Um, and it's not a freestyle sort of cursor. It just goes on to an item or something that you can just click on there. So the first thing we're going to do then is completely not do a thing. So for three minutes, what, we, what we're going to do is just... Have a look at the scenery, have a look at the background, we're going to get our first achievement called Learned Zen, and that's for staying idle for three whole minutes, which is... And that actually gives us one of those bizarre achievements as well, where we get 22 gamer score as well, which really, I can tell how much that hurts people. The OCD in some people has to have a 5 or a 0 on the end of the gamer score. Oh, this... <laughs> so if you don't complete this game, this messes with the gamer score. People get really pissed off about it. <laughs> Which is sometimes quite funny. But there we go then. So stay idle for three minutes. And that will get you the Learn Zen achievement. Now don't move yet. Well you can move. But basically you see the sort of hanging dangly things up above us. Um, if you obviously use the right stick to go up. We're going, they're basically eyes. So just press the A button on every eye. And that should get us the next achievement immediately. Called Eyes with Eyes Wide Open. Because Creed is super cute. Anyway, interact with the sort of bridge thing on the right. And then now you get a timed um, sort of section. So you get a couple of those uh, throughout the game. Where a bubble comes up and it starts counting down. You just need to uh, interact with that very quickly. Otherwise, you're going to head to the right cave. <clears throat> There's only one achievement where it's very important that we click the timed bubble. But that's not till a lot later on. So we don't need to worry about it yet. So for now, what we can do is just uh, interact with this. Well, it's a rat ass, basically. And then we can pick up this thing right here. Give that a little uh, smushing. I still, I don't know what the hell we are. We, we, we look like a frog with genital wart on our back or something. That's the best way I can describe it. Again, better than what I can draw, so I can't say much. Now, we basically have to do it in this particular order. I'm not doing it for a laugh. Now, we can interact with this spiky flower thing. 
He says no, so what we're going to do is give him a little scream at, and then interact with it again. And basically, well, well, he dead now. He in our belly. And I tell you what, if you've gotten any of those, um, you know, like the gone off stuff, which only costs like five pence or five cents or whatever, you you know you've eaten worse. So you should be fine. Anyway, with the inventory, you don't actually have to interact with your inventory and drag it down or anything. As long as you've got that um, item in your inventory, you can use it on whatever the hell you need, which is exactly what we've done. By the way, that Go Go Vegan achievement is unmissable, so you should already have three achievements within the first five minutes. So interact with the rat ass. There we go. And now this um, this next achievement is randomized, but it's not too difficult at all. So basically, this shape is going to move... Uh, in the middle, and we need to make a star shape. So sometimes it'll, it won't always come up like this, uh, but it is very easy. So what you need to do is click on the eyes, and that'll make. Um, there's a couple of shapes. It'll basically make yet another shape. Um, all you need to do is just keep interacting with the eyes until you get this star shape, and then after you do this, just click on each eye once, and that will actually progress the story a bit. So sometimes it can come up easy. It's not too bad. It's nothing like. If you choose one eye, something else will move. It'll always just be that one. That one will move, then go to the next eye, which will move, etc., etc. So, apologies, though, if that was a little bit quick. Um, but that can take you seconds, or it can take you a couple of minutes. So, interact with someone who looks like she's lost her mind and hasn't brushed her tree hair in a while. And then interact with this string thing on the right. That's going to get rid of a whole bunch of creepy... We're basically in Australia right now. This, this is where we are. Big, chunky-ass spiders with one eyes things. Blech. That is Australia for you. Right, what we need to do now is very quickly push all these stones in. Doesn't matter which order you've got to do it in. We just have to push all the stones in. Uh, because basically, um, they can go away quickly. Uh, so the quicker you do it, the faster it can go. Um... But yeah, if one of if one of the stones does go back in, you can just go back and click it in. So again, a very easy one. Shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to a minute or so. So interact with this string and then make sure to eat this. I mean, that, that kind of looks like a fish key type thing. I really don't know what I'm supposed to be looking at in most of this. Um, <laughs> to be fair, but interact with the first one and get jizzed on. Oh, that's probably just water, actually. Sorry, sorry about that. And then interact with the second string. And oh, we're going to eat again because, well, why not? We're on our Australian holidays, apparently. Right, so we can't actually interact with the fourth string yet. So what we can do, now that we've just eaten that thing, we can interact with the thing underneath um, mental head right here. And then we can just jump on the back of it. So it's only timed because they start flying away, but it's basically unmissable because loads start popping out. So go for a fly. How the hell... I tell you what, this is like me jumping on my, my daughter's back. She's only two and expecting her to carry me. That's impressive. Anyway, interact with the timed bubble once again. And then we'll grab the string. That'll pull down this little wiener bug thing. So we're going to interact with it once. <gasps> Fuming mate. And then we're going to interact with it again. And we're going to spit on it because, you know, why the hell not? Anyway, that gives us the diamond of life. And there we go, we can now basically move out of this area, so, you know, if you're wondering what the hell's going on, me, me neither. Right, what we're going to do actually is press the B button to get into our astral zone. Now what this does is, this allows us to see spirits, but there are two achievements related to this, we'll just whack them out of the way. So the first one is for staying in the astral bubble for three minutes, so again, probably worth pausing the video until your achievement unlocks. Uh, we're just going to have a chill, watching all the spirits and ghosty boys fly by, flow by, fly by even. And then when that achievement unlocks, what you can just do is spam the B button to death, because we need to enter the astral 33 times. So as soon as that one unlocks, just keep spamming it. We basically need to press the B button there 66 times, and then eventually... Spam, 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 spam! Spam! Spam the ham! There we go, Astral Visitor. So that's the two achievements related to Astral Visitors done. We we need to talk to uh, Mental Head again. Sorry, I only call her Mental Head because she looks like she looks like she's got about eight kids and they're all making her lose her mind or something. Um, bit of a long cutscene, unskippable for the moment. 
basically telling us what to do, which really gives me no indication because I was still clueless at this point in all fairness. So that bit is all automatic, but what we need to do now is jump on our two-year-old daughter again. Sorry, Delilah. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> just breaking your back. But we need to jump up. As soon as you jump on, then we can press the B button to get into our Astral Zone, and it'll start heading up. And then we can just head through here. So as soon as you see the sign, flick through. Life is as golden as nuggety balls. So remember what I said then, if you press the, there's, I don't think there's any chat to select you can go to if you make a mistake, but remember, um, you when, when, if you press the start button, that goes back to the main menu rather than a pause button. So, heading to the right, we need to interact with the arrow twice, and then sadly, this eyeball's gonna get it. Oh, that looks like a, a painful death, as it were. So, you can also um, press the left and right trigger to put the screen closer or further away from you, sorry, just... Uh, forgot to say that one. The left stick is basically moving the camera left or right. Uh, forgot to mention those two earlier, so apologies about that. But grab the crank, interact with this one, and this will get us another achievement. Unmissable. Uh, but this is one of the, again, one of the most confusing things about the game. It's basically more or less kind of acts like a time travel box. So like Doctor Who, except, you know, this is pretty much better than current Doctor Who. David Tennant will always be the best one. Uh, that's just my opinion. Don't slate me if there's any true Doctor Who fans out there. So, um, what you have to do then is basically you press the B button to go into Astral Mode. The only way you can do that is if all the eyes are open on this time travel box thing. So, speak with this worm eyeball thing. And then basically what you need to do is there are, there's going to be two rings. One outer, one inner. You press uh, left... On the left stick, you press down, I think that moves the inner circle, and then if you press on the left stick, left or right, that moves the outer circle. So we basically just need to match up to, you know, easy enough when you know what you're doing and you sort of get used to it, but um, can be a little bit <laughs> confusing first. So, when you're here, press the B button, but I think you might actually have to speak to him, that, that sort of worm in the middle again, so I think you've got to press the A button on him. And then it's going to tell us what to do uh, with bubble clouds in a minute in terms of pressing down on the left stick and pressing left and right on the left stick. But um, for some reason this game can be quite sort of fidgety and a bit finicky, but there we go. So it's telling us what to do. So with the out, yeah, so left and right on the left stick is the inner ring and up and down is the uh, outer ring. So what we're going to do is go for the fish, which is on the bottom right corner. Now, if that happens, don't worry about that. Just um, press the B button again. We'll come back to that. So we basically need to make a fish icon. So as you can see, there it is then. Uh, again, apologies if that was a bit quick. Um, but as soon as you get the fish icon, which is the bottom right hand corner, the little light bulb will appear. And then when you press the um, button, this sort of standby mode button in the middle, the bulb will break, which means that you have done it. Um, so you don't need to worry about that again. Uh, press, if you use the right, uh, right stick to move your cursor, put it with, on the squid, press the A button on the squid. Squid word. Uh, that's basically going to give us this fish that we can eat. So, yeah, this whole bit can be a little bit confusing, especially when you're trying to get on something else, um, but then you accidentally do something first. It's a, it's a pain in the butt snatch sometimes, really. Um, but this time, we are heading... Uh, we're trying to do the top right hand corner. Um, now, what I end up doing is actually smashing the electricity bulb at what it's already on, on the left hand, uh, top left hand corner. That doesn't matter. Um, if you do it now, that's fine. If you do it later, that's fine. You'll probably end up doing it by accident anyway. Uh, again, it's, it's, generally, this is just me getting used to it because it is such a confusing one. But it is the top right one there. The robot is what we actually need. Um, so again, I get zapped. Don't worry if that happens now or later. That'll um, pretty much come naturally. 
Um, but that's what we're after then. Um, we're after the top right-hand corner, which is the robot one. Now, for whatever reason, actually, the worm was appearing, but the, um, the, the button to push wasn't coming up. So, got no idea why. So, what we can end up doing is just pressing the start button, pressing the main menu, and going back into it. Now, I won't have lost any progress. Um, everything that I've done so far will still be there. So, if you press the X button to go into your inventory, you can still see what you've got. And as you can see, the top left-hand corner bulb for me uh, still broke. So, there we go. It, yeah, it, it can be a little bit confusing, especially with this bit, as I said. But there we go. Once that bulb lights up, then the top right-hand corner, that is what we want. And that is what we're going for. And um, this basically is just going to give us another item. Now, if you actually end up pressing something else and you end up going to the very right-hand side bulb, which is the sun, again, do not worry about it because we if you don't do this bit now, you can do it later on anyway for an achievement. So don't panic if uh, you haven't got this yet. That is fine. And then if we, we can just immediately then go to the right, which should be the sun icons, as you can see there. All the sun icons are together. And I've got to apologize that <laughs> for one... That bit took a, bit, a little bit longer than I anticipated to actually do. But Jesus Christ, that confused the sugar daddy titties off me, man. And it really did. But, um, it's not your typical, typical point-and-click adventure. Yeah. Now, for some reason, you've got this angry-looking thing with one eyeball. It's probably blind. I don't know. He's got a stick. He's got, like, a battering stick. But anyway, he's going to pop in. Um going to give us a whack he's going to bully us but we are pip the frog of life you cannot do that to the frog of life so speak to potentially blind frog weird thing he's gonna shout at us and we're gonna crap our pants a little bit and we're gonna have a laugh <laughs> that's very funny uh, <laughs> well we actually um have a little tear probably behind our eye like <laughs> that was funny because i actually grabbed my pants anyway another unskippable cutscene you can always tell when it's an unskippable cutscene because you've got the timer in the bottom right hand corner um oh oh he just licked his eyeball that's i don't know if that's meant to be Hot or disgusting or something. Really got no idea. We've got big wiener worms in the background. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. And I tell you what, whoever came up with this story is... One, hilarious, and two, must have been... Hi! Okay, here we go. This is my kind of party, man. It's a beach alien frog type party. Day, as long as there's booze, I think we're all good. Or whatever these frog aliens drink, I don't know. So we're going to speak to this little worm first. He's going to give us a little thing that we need to do. Um, so basically, what he's saying is we need to find all these little orbs to put in the rest of this time machine um, in order to basically finish the whole game. Uh, but we come up to missable achievements. So, you see this wide-eyed guy blowing some bubbles? We just need to keep speaking to him. He's basically just going to keep walking to the right. Now, if this guy doesn't scream, Hi! Then I don't know what does. Because that is not drunk. That is more... That's more smarties pills than anything, to be honest. But uh, there we go. Very glass-eyed. Alright, so just keep him walking all the way to the right. Past big Bubba Munger there. Um, having a little, having a little dance. That is a hell of a dance. That is a proper. Oh well, we can, we got to speak to him anyway in order to get an achievement. Um, so you can speak to him. It doesn't matter if you miss it here or we'll just get him on the way back. Uh, but the way Big Bubba Manga dances right here, he wants a, a big flowery Hawaiian thing, which of course we've already got from the time machine. So if you don't have it now, uh, we can get it in just a little bit, and that's fine. 
Otherwise, speak to him again, and we're going to get the achievement uh, for basically bubble blowing bubbles in the string eyes eyeball. So we can interact with the eyeball, and then press and hold down on the D-pad, and that'll fling us up right there, and happy days. By the way, as I was trying to say, uh, we can um, interact with the door to go through, and then we're going to speak to Shikaka. But uh, what I was trying to say was, uh, Big Mama Gumba, or whatever his name is, he dances like every sort of nervous white person. You know, those that are in a club that just haven't had too much to drink yet, so they so sort of start doing weird robot arms and you look really awkward? That is genuinely just... Th th that's th that's me. Ashamedly, that is me. <laughs> Still, it's all good. <laughs> So then, this uh, Ashikaka wants a golden hand, so we've got a couple of things to do in order to get that. So, heading out and heading down, go for the slide of life, whack yourself into a tree. Now we're going to get the next achievement. And if we just interact with the Hawaiian thing on top of his head, we, uh, we'll get the golden necklace, which basically has the next orb, or the next level, and we can give him that. Now, remember that we got this Hawaiian thing from, it was in the top right-hand corner, the robot sign in our little time machine. So, if you haven't got it yet, that is how you get it. So, we've got the swag. Full of swag. We've got the golden medallion, which means we can now head over to the next level. But there is a timed missable achievement that we need to do as soon as we get to the next snowy level. So again, hover, hover your right stick over. For some reason, this game can be quite finicky. In terms of, it, it, it sort of it takes a couple of seconds for it to realise that you're actually there. Um, <laughs> before the right stick moves. So as soon as we can do that, again you need to make sure that all the eyes are open on the time machine. Press the B button on the Astal, or the Astal, whatever it is. Um, and then, uh, then we can eventually move it. But again, it, it can take a little bit of finicky moving. Uh, but the left bottom, what you need then is obviously the snowflake symbol, because that is where we are off. Press the standby button, and away we go. So, like I said, the first thing we need to be doing is immediately moving to the left, and we need to basically save this uh, guy thing from dying. Uh, but we need to press the correct buttons twice, and one of them will be a timed button. So, if you don't get this one, you may have to replay the first sort of 20 minutes or however much it is to get here. So, very important. So, immediately when we can start and we can move a little pip, we can move to the left. So, don't stop. Time no stuff for no one, man. Run, 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 run. Here he is hanging. So, the option you need to choose is the left one to grab him up, and next will be the timed option, which will be on the right-hand side. So we've got the item, so the timed option, grab him up, and that is what will get us the achievement. So, I'm not sure how much time you've got, but I think if you do end up going to the right and doing stuff, uh, he'll be dead by the time you get back. Which will actually... Um, I don't know if you can actually finish the game then, uh, because we've got an item, a drum item. So I'm not sure if that'll be there if you come back, but, you know, do it first, and there you go. Um, also, I reckon the, the reason that you are cold, my friend, is because you've got snow on your head. If you just sort of brush it off, I mean, you've got, you've got, you haven't got a body. You kind of look like Peter Griffin in that one episode where he, he just has legs and no body, which is um, hot in a disgusting, weird kind of way. Anyway, keep going to the right not sure if you have to speak to these guys, um, but I end up speaking to everyone anyway, because a couple of times you need to speak to certain things, like we've got Jughead here, and French Mustache Guy, Onion, whatever the hell that is on the right. Uh, but basically, we need to speak to a couple of people, things, to progress the story along, so that's why you end up seeing me speaking to everyone. Ah, oh, honey, are you cold? To be fair, mind, I'm cold in uh, 25 degrees heat, so... Actually, I'm not, because I'm a fat mess now. 
Right, so go to this ice cube and basically just interact with the uh, top of the button, the cloud. We're going to be doing that a couple of times until we get it to the left-hand side. And that is some epic tongue strength. I know a lot of people that would enjoy a tongue like that. Flicking chocolate off their face and stuff. <laughs> of course. And then when we get it close enough, you should now see the option to play the drums. Very easy minigame, uh, but let me talk it through it. So basically, a whole lot of do 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 do, -do um, will ensue if we just press the cloud button there. So as soon as you see an image appear above your head, that is when you can press the A button to bang the drum. So we're going to see the drum, bam, give it a bam, and that'll start getting the ice it calls down. Again, it's, it's a very... Um, can be hard to see, but it sort of looks like a pointing arrow up. But any time that you see the image appearing above your head, press the A button, bang the drum, do this a c about four or five times, and we will get an automatic sort of cutscene thing, and we're going to get the next achievement as well. Job done! To be fair, sitting on a fire, that looks like it pinches a bit. So, we can get ourselves out of the snow. This skeleton thing, I don't actually think does anything. Um, so, yeah, you can actually just keep moving to the left if you want. Because the more you click on him, he just turns back into a snowman anyway. So, I don't actually think it makes a difference. Click in with him. So, we're going to get yet another achievement if we go to the right here. And all it is, is for tuning the radio. Now, you could think this would be... And it's most difficult, uh, but it's actually not. So, there we go. So, we've got the orb, which we can grab, but we need to do a couple of things. So, the first one, we need to tune the... Because the spider's going to get a bit wienerish about it. So, just tune both um, antennas until they are, are at their most crinkliest, like so. So, you need to get them both to the most crinkliest, or, you know, as, as sort of squiffy as they can go right there. That'll get us the... Oh, we hear is Radio Gaga. So, what we need to do then, grab the orb. That'll be good. And then what we need to do is grab the fish that we swallowed earlier on um, from the time machine. So, again, if you haven't got this one, you need to get it from your time machine. And we need to be popping that one in as well. Now, the radio is actually going to start moving. And what you should see is actually an option, timed option. As you can see, it should actually... Do that, then you can just grab him, chuck him on the big Spider-Man thing's head, and that is good. Now, you've seen an edit jump there, because for whatever reason, it didn't appear for me first. He just threw me back um, with the orb, so I just picked up the orb again, and then I went to the left. So, just in case you were wondering, um, it didn't happen for me the first time. He put me back, I had to do it the second time. So, right then, this bit is basically over, so we can now just keep heading to the left. Have a bit of a bumba monga dunga dinga hunga hunga bunga gunga dance if you so wish um, but you know i just waste precious time so head back to the transportal device and here we are then so we need to put the robot bulb or the robot orb or the bulb or whatever uh, interact with that twice because we are a shite shot we are the schnitschnot. And there we go. So, of course, obviously what you need to do is press the A button now. Um, oh, well, you can actually apparently keep doing it now. It really confuses me about when it works and when it actually doesn't. It's just random for some reason. Anyway, make sure the top right one is uh, has the robot face on it, because, of course, that is where we're going, rather than the sun one on the very right-hand side. So, the top right-hand corner, the robot one, we're off to the robot world. Uh, but it does, and it can get confusing when you're <laughs> when you're specifically focusing on one thing, and then you accidentally put something else up, and then you're like, "What the sh Eisenhausen? What just happened?" Anyway, we've got our Doctor Who time machine, the better one, which they should now use from now on. Uh, ignore the, this big Bart Simpson-looking dude; he's just trying to get his worm to go. 
Uh, we're going to come back to him a little bit later on. You can talk to him if you want. He basically tells us that he needs one strawberry in order to go, which you think you need a bunch, to be honest, but there we go. Um, again, we'll be coming back to these. Uh, we've got little Homer Simpson there on the left, Big Marge on the right. Um, we'll just call the middle one Lisa there, because that's the nerd. That's the nerd who gets bullied all the time, apparently. So we'll come back to them later on. You can interact with the bird here if you want. Again, it just just like the skeleton snowman, makes no difference <laughs> whatsoever. But we're just going to keep heading all the way to the left. We're going to have a chat with, uh, well, a well, little spiky nuts right here. Again, press the left trigger to uh, zoom the screen out a bit. For some reason, I was having a lot of trouble. In fact, I think that's as far as it goes. Uh, so go into your astral mode and get yourself off. And there is the golden hand which we need for Shikaka. But we need... He wants us to get the uh, big powerful orb. Which, you know, is obviously what you do. Because he's not evil at all. He's got spikes coming out of his ass, for God's sake. Never trust anyone with spikes coming out of their buns. But what he actually does give us is another bulb to go to the leaf planet type thing. So, just head all the way to the right again and head back into your teleportation advice. Teleportation device? Eh, close enough. <laughs> Here we are at the edge of the universe, interact with the left light bulb. So that is what we're going in, so now we can press the B button of course to go back into Astral Power. Eventually, and this is another point where the game takes a couple of seconds to recognise where we are. And of course we're putting the <coughs> leaf um, sort of section on the left hand side as you can see there. So as long as it's looking like leafy boys on the left hand side, and as long as the light bulb is lit up, we can now press the start button to head on over. Head on over, baby. So this bit is a potentially confusing bit in the game. Now we basically have to collect five or six of these eyeball things. As you can see, it was just on the second branch there um, as, as we go out to the right. So collect that first eyeball. Make sure to grab that one. It's on the second branch, as I said. And the second one will be a little kind of like fish bird fly in there. He is kind of looks like Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish again from The Simpsons. So interact with him. As soon as he falls, we can interact with him again. For some reason, I lost him for a second. But um, as soon as you interact with him, we can now grab this sphere. So we need to grab these six eyeballs and five or four of these spheres. So it can be confusing, but now if we interact, if we um, get the screen outwards, interact with that flying thing on the right hand, on the left hand side there, um, that'll give us the second eyeball. So it was on the uh, left hand branch there. That that. Stupid weird thing was out. So we should now have two eyeballs and one sphere. Otherwise, for now, we can just um, interact with uh, this. In fact, this mushroom I don't think does anything, but it is the thing just to the right of it, which, well, to me, it looks like something. I'll leave the imagination up to you, but it is like a big flower type thing. So you need to interact with that. It'll eventually um, fall flat, and then we can pick up our third spiky eyeball thing. Man, what did that look like? Something long and sausagey. A sausage. Right, now we can just head up, ignoring uh, old George right there. Don't know why his name is George, but it is now. Right, so we are getting to the point where we've got a few options and where to go. Um, interacting with that thing on the right doesn't make a difference. 
Now what uh, we have to do is interact with all these like, I mean they look like they can tickle your butt with it to be honest, whatever they are. Um, but interact with all of these, um, but it's this one where we see another little eyeball, as soon as we pop them down, a little eyeball falls to the ground. So we can grab that a little bit later on. Again, not sure if a, a prerequisite is to pop everything else first and then that, not entirely sure. Otherwise we can just head to the left hand side and we can pop up here. Uh, so we'll grab that fourth eyeball in just a little bit. So, again, popping them, we'll um, get this fifth eyeball popping out. So we can gra go ahead and grab that boy. So, grab that should be number four now. And, of course, we've already got number five, which is on the ground. So what we can do now is we can... There's nothing else left to grab here. So we can just go to the right-hand side arrow now. So make sure to be clicking the right-hand side arrow. And now, I do interact with that blob thing that has just appeared above us. Um, I interact with this dude twice. There we go. So, we've interacted with him once. Again, not sure if it, again, makes a whole heap of difference. He does turn into, like, a spider thing. Um, but we'll come back to that later on. Interact with this thing just in front of us and pick up what looks like a blue leaf type thing. Leaf of um, discrepancies leaf. Whatever that, whatever I'm on about. So we're going to talk to Big Bubba Munger right here. We're going to give him a little shout out. And then a little timed bubble is going to appear. And that is the bubble that we are going to choose. And that is for... Well, he thinks he can scare us. But bro, we have frog-like death power. So interact with the timed bubble. The skull on the left-hand side there. And glubba glubba. Now, this is a game, actually, which you can make choices. These spikes, basically, the more enemies and stuff you you eat, etc., um, basically affects um, all the spikes and everything coming out of your head, but we don't actually eat that many enemies. Anyway, for this next bit, what you have to do is press the B button. Now, the uh, correct route is marked by a blue line, while the incorrect ones are red, but I'll just tell you which way to go anyway. So, it's the very left-hand side first. There's a very specific path we have to go down. So, the very left one first, this time we are heading to the left again. So again, if you press the B button, if you want to do it that way, the blue path is the correct one. Um, that's if you want to do it your way. Head um, to the left once again. There we go, heading to the left. Right, for the next one. It's like being Sucked by a black hole. Must feel really good. Anyway, head to the very far right. So the furthest right that we can go. Tidy as a beans on toast, which Americans don't get for some reason. Um, next, we go into the left one. So the very left one. There's nothing wrong with beans on toast. It's magnifico, man. You know? And next, we are going to the right one. So the very right. And for the final one, as soon as we get this, as soon as we get sucked off by the black hole. <laughs> oh boy, you're making me blush here. And then we can just click the down button because that is the worm that we need. That is why we had to follow that specific path. Uh, because the little worm with the ball, <laughs> with the sphere ball that we need. We can just head down delishimundo. There we go. Right, so obviously this time we'll be heading to the left. And eventually we get sucked off enough that, well, we need a break for one. You get sucked off that many times, you definitely need a break. Anyway, interact with the worm. Put your tongue around that big, black, beautiful, sausage-looking thing. Which is the worm, of course, that gives us the next sphere. And we can just head down, leaving Drunkard Mugard there to it. So as soon as we get down here, we need to be picking up a big black eyeball, which is basically directly in front of us there. So make sure to be grabbing that one. There we go. Happy days. So now you should have should have five already in your inventorious. And there should be a sixth one. There it is, directly in front of us, just past the cave. So that should now be your sixth one. There we go. Two, four, six. So you should, at this point, now have six, so we can head back up. And we can now go to the right. And basically, we're just going to be giving this big... Well, kind of looks like a, a, one of those androids 
upgrade things. Uh, chuck him all the eyeballs. Again, you should have six at this point. He gives us a sphere. And there we go. So we should now have three out of five. But the fifth one is automatic. So we're actually only looking for four is what we need. So we can head back down. Now we're going to be making our way to the right hand side, um, again that doesn't do anything, just spews out a couple of eyeballs, <laughs> so don't panic about that. But we need to interact with this sort of middle mushroom type thing, as it turns out it's not a mushroom at all. <laughs> so it's going to try and eat this, but man we is too strong because our dearly beloved, I can't remember seeing it beloved, but there we go. Now if you press and hold down a d-pad, that is going to spring us up like a spring coil, and get us a sphere number four. Happy days. Right, for this giant broccoli head, we need to do this in a specific order. There are six of these things that we can just interact with, so we're going to interact with the uh, first one, which is the very left. Next, we are going to choose the fifth one, so we got one, two, three, four, and five, so it is the very fifth one that we choose. That's going to help us move this bug thing again with the sphere. So apologies, there is actually five spheres that we need to grab. I said four for some reason. Next, to the very left of you, grab, uh, push the fourth one. And that'll uh, pop him over a side to old uh, Broccoli Mountain Head. Next, we are going to push the second button. So there's the three close together, so make sure to press the middle one, which is number two. Number two. See, I can speak Scotlandish as well, you know. Not very well, but I do not speak it. And the very last one is the very right-hand side one, which is the sixth one. I'm probably going to get some stick for that Scott Jackson, but, you know, flub it. Right, there we go. So we got him right where we need him. Now we just have to interact with the fourth um, button, which is basically the kind of flush, let's call it. So it's rather than sticking out of the ground, it's on Broccoli Man's legs. That's going to plop him down, and that is going to get us the fifth sphere. So, yes, apologies. I said we only collect four. We do actually collect five. So right now, you should have all five spheres. Now we can head to the right. Now, remember at the beginning of the game, we picked up that sort of dead flower thing, which was at the very first beginning cave. We need to put him down so he gets his uh, Sonic the Hedgehog spikes back on. Next, we now need to talk to him. We've got two pepper armies there, having a joke and a giggle. Grow some teeth you want to, mate? Go to the dentist. God damn. Wipe that lipstick off. You look like a clown. A clown prostitute. So anyway, talk to this flower a couple of times, and then he's going to spike up this flower thing. And then what you need to do is press and hold up on the D-pad right now, after collecting the thing off the floor. Uh, but you need, again, where, you, where you're standing... I do it eventually. There we go then. So, after interacting with the thing on the floor, that gives it, um, puts up like this little weird tongue thing. Press and hold in the D-pad. There we go. That that pops us up. Next, what we can do is interact with that tongue. Again, using the right stick to, curse, uh, to move over it. And that gives us the blue weird strawberry, leaving the Pepper Army Clown prostitutes to themselves. So, you should now have uh, Spiky Ball, five spheres, and that blue purple, strawberry, whatever the hell colour that is. So that was a uh, particularly interesting one. Mazes and all types of crudsters, but we can now actually move on, so we can just keep heading all the way to the left into the old transportational device arena, said Flanders. So, we do make it back. For some reason, uh, this part of the game was being quite finicky for me, as in not working. But I think if you press the A button once, that should open up the eyes and you should be able to go. And uh, you should be able to do it. If not, just um, keep pressing the A button a couple of times and eventually it'll work. So, yeah, for some reason, didn't always work for me. But there we go, we managed to get there. But basically, we go into the top right corner this time, which is the robot world again. So, obviously... 
making sure that it's on Robot World, putting the robot face to it, and etc, etc. You know what to do. And a flying bar of soap with <laughs> what looked a bit AIDS, kind of AIDS-related there, coming out of it, the soap's bum. Well, he's flying away from probably the stinkiest person you'll ever know. So, now, again, making sure that we got the five spheres on us, uh, head past Bart Simpson right here, and we're going to feed this worm the strawberry, it's going to get him moving again. So, it's important, actually, to make sure that we still got the five spheres on us. Now, what you can do is actually go ahead and get the orb for the guy on the very left in this world, but you will actually miss an achievement. Um, so, move this worm and then pick up this electric eel on the right here. Or oh, electric eel, six-eyed eel. Always delicious. And we could do head pack. Apparently one strawberry didn't get the worm very far, that's a surprise. Anyway, we need to beat up Homer and Marge, so interact with Homer as long as you've got the electric eel, which you should have by now. Homer dies, Marge goes for a run, falls, loses her wig. Marge was bald all this time, what? Jesus Christ, you could have told me. Anyway, Lisa's very happy. She's delighted nobody's bullying her, and we get the achievement for No Bullies Allowed. Now, remember, as long as you've got the strawberry and the five spheres on you, that um, is all good. Because if you picked up that orb, um, basically, this would be like a, a, a kind of like a nightmare fallout type world. So those bullies wouldn't be there anymore, which is why you needed to do this first. Before we head back to the Leaf Planet. So that's exactly where we're going. Back to the left-hand side, Leaf Planet. And that is why we've done in a particular order. Just in case you were like, why are we going from... Why are we going there? Here? Everywhere? I ain't got time for that. Flying bar of soap goes away with three eyes. I'd, I'd, honestly, I'd really love to know the uh, lead developer. What he was smoking when he made this game. I want some. I want to make a game like this too. So, anyway, this time, of course, what we can do is now go ahead and grab the orb, and you'll see why we had to do it in this particular order. Basically, all the delicious colour goes away, and, it, like I said, it becomes like a war-torn wasteland, very much like um, a couple of places I've been to in Great Britain. Anyway, head to the left, we're just going to head all the way up. All the way up, all the way up to the urn. To the end! Sorry, sorry, really, really shouldn't be deafening you on a day like today, should I? Right, so here we are then, in the middle. Just interact with that, and what frog head is going to do, uh, the genital watered frog head is going to pop all the five spheres on, he's going to do it automatically, and then we can go ahead and grab the orb, and watch out for death and destruction. Type thing. There. Ah, oh, well, well done, Poop and Snatch. You've just destroyed the world. Stupid. Anyway, what it does get us for destroying the world is the wooden crystal achievement. Um, so yeah. And now we've got a um, couple of sonic spikes on our back. It's not good. It's not good at all. So what we're going to do is actually head back to the robot world now. So again, just put the robot on the right-hand side at the top. Again, you might end up accidentally putting the sun one first, but of course if that happens, just press the B button again. And uh, put the robot one on. Uh, for some reason, I don't know what a robot looks like anymore. Ah, oh, not the snowflake, damn it. We've got enough snowflakes in this world. So, eventually, there we go. So, now you can see why we had to get the um, revenge of the bullies. Not revenge of the bullies. Bullies don't need revenge, they need a good ass kicking. Um, the, the bully achievement anyway, which is why we had to get that one first, because as you'll be able to see when we go back to the robot world, everyone will be gone because everything's sort of war-torn and fudged up, yo.
Um, so let's head to the left, quick as can be. And now we've got this guy who sounds hilarious. Anyway, we're gonna talk to. Oh, is that Marge Simpson? Yeah, kind of looked Margie. She's gonna give us a little whack on the head anyway. So what we're gonna do is crap the pants off her now by screaming at her, which is always how you get your own way. Scream at enough people and they shit themselves enough. So off she pops to the left. We are going to grab the wrench that he dropped. Again, this is another important item to grab, so make sure to grab that. And of course, all the bullies are gone at this point, so that's why we got it done first. So heading all the way to the left, this is an automatic thing. We basically put the orb on the wrench. So heading all the way up to the left. And again, this is another... <coughs> excuse me. This is another automatic bit, so again, use the left trigger there to whack the screen out. Then we can grab the orb wrench and interact the left bub uh, bubble there. Make sure it's the left bubble that you use rather than the right one. And that'll give us the golden hand. It'll also give us the golden hand achievement called gold fingers with brown on them. Wonder where those... <laughs> well, wonder where those are gone. Okay, so using the wrench on the guy again, then use the left bubble once more, which is going to knock him out instead of shooting him. And basically, so what that'll do then, very fantastic. That gives us the orb wrench and the gold hand, which of course is what we need. Now before, I think, when the game first came out, there was a particular glitch for unlocking the actual ending achievement. Um, so you had to do a bit of trickery, etc. But so far, or for me at least anyway, there was no such glitch. So hopefully it'll be the same for you, where, where you can just crack on with what I'm doing. And get the ending achievement. We are... Well, we're only about eight minutes from the end of the game now, actually. But we're going to get our... <laughs> the lady with the eight kids who's stressing her out. She's going to have a little talk to us for a minute. And what we're actually going to be doing now is going back to Leaf World. Sunny World is going to be our final destination. Uh, so again, just use, um, put the leaves up, go back to Leaf World. restore some order and balance so we almost fudged the world up so let's make it better so again this time we're going to use the right bubble of course we're not going to shoot our George-ish looking friend don't know why his name is George by the way but you know why not so he chucks the orb in um, basically order and balance is going to be restored all our spikes are going to go and colour will return everybody happy now and now, this time, like I said, we can just head back to the transportationable device and head to the very right-hand side world, the Sun World. The party, I tell you what, it could be the end of the world, but party people never stops. And that's what impresses me the most. Ah, stinking robot world. We don't want to go to the friggin' robot world. Screw the robot world, man. It's the sunny world we need, please. Now a big huge prop and shout out to everyone who continued partying. Is it the end of the world? Well, we're already fudged up, so why not keep going? Why not keep going until we all die? So, uh, again, pull the string, hold down to the D-pad and give yourself the fling of life. We're going to speak to Shikakar again. 
Chicago. You're out of there. And if anyone doesn't know what I mean, just go ahead and watch the second Ace Ventura movie. You will understand exactly what I mean. So we're going to have a speak to him now. And then basically what, what you're going to do is probably be pissed off at how all this bit ends. Okay then, so we had to go through all of that um, because Shikaka wanted to scratch his back. So he only gave us the orb when he had the golden hand to scratch his back. I can literally see a lot of spikes and everything on this island that we could have scratched his back for him and got the orb and that would have saved at least 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah, so that is, the the end of the world nearly happened because Shikaka wanted to get his back scratched. So, um, yeah, that's basically the game there. Um, <laughs> which is a bit uh, frustrating, isn't it? But anyway, you put the orb in the middle and we start flying up towards heaven. I think I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if this is a heaven, but uh, it resembles it close enough, close enough, you know, a couple of clouds and everything. And... Um, but basically, for all miserable achievements now, we're done. We've, we should now have them. We've only got two achievements left, which is four. If we head to the right. Well, maybe after a little bit of chatting. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, better TARDIS. Oh, I didn't expect it to be sucked off by a black hole there. But anyway, we go through this, um, uh, you know, thing in an airport. Go through buzzer, metal detector things. Speak to this guy, he's basically going to chuck us back over when he grabs all our items. We just have to nip through. Uh, this is basically, this is the end of the game, by the way. So, as soon as he has a look, he sucks all them dry. Oh. Oh. Hey, excuse me, buddy. You, uh... You, you stop putting your hand in places it doesn't belong. Uh, as long as it was through the mouth, I suppose, it's not bad. So, anyway, takes all the items. We're going to head just back through. And that is what is going to get us the achievement access granted. We can head past him. And we just have to wait for a couple of people or a couple of things to go either up into heaven or down into hell. So all we do then is just head forward here, the cloud is basically, we're just going to speak to the cloud and that is going to be the end of the game. You should now get your full 1000 out of 1000, so I'm going to leave it here. Oh, he pets us as well, that's nice. I like being petted on the ball. Uh, so he gives us a key, happy days, so yeah, so I will leave it here. So thank you so, so much for watching guys and gals, hope you enjoyed the game and that the guide helped as well. It was a very bizarre <laughs> but fun experience anyway. Um, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend if you did find this helpful. Don't forget to check me out on socials as well. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. There it is. That is where you should now get your final achievement. Big shout out to everyone on Patreon who continues to support the channel. You guys and gals are absolute legends. And a thank you to everyone who continues to interact with me on the daily basis. Huge, huge shout out to everyone, so thank you so much. But that's it from me then, guys and gals. I shall see you in the next one. Big love. <laughs>